This next lesson involves students watching two chemical reactions take place. Um, those chemical reactions are going to involve hydrogen peroxide and active dry yeast. And you can activate prior knowledge by asking them if they know what hydrogen peroxide is. Um, sometimes people put them on cuts. And does anyone know what happens when people put them on cuts? And some of the students will know that um, it actually makes the wound bubble a little bit. And so there's a little bit of fizzing where you pour the peroxide. Another thing you can ask is if anyone knows what active dry yeast is usually used for in cooking. And some of them will know that a lot of times it's used in baking. So it's what helps bread dough or pizza dough rise and get fluffy. Um, the goal of today's lesson is for not, it's not for students to actually understand what's happening in the chemical reaction. It's for them to be able to see the signs that a chemical reaction is taking place. So a lot of times people will say that there's four common signs that a chemical reaction has just occurred. And that's the release of heat or odor, a change in color, the release of a gas and that's often seen by fizzing or bubbling, or the formation of a permanent solid. So today, again, they're gonna see two chemical reactions and their job or the objective of the lesson is for them to be able to make observations and to recognize any of the four signs that they're seeing a chemical reaction. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, they're gonna have the lab sheet, so they're gonna have the instructions for it, but we're gonna start with a quarter cup of hydrogen peroxide, which I pre-measured. Just use any old plastic bowl. I'm just using a clear one so we can see what's happening inside. And this is actually a kitchen thermometer. So I'm going to let that thermometer settle for a little bit. And it seems to be staying at 66.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and then I'm going to add a teaspoon of the yeast. Now you could ask the students what they think is gonna happen before we put this in. Again, we always want them to make predictions to give an example or an explanation of why they think so. And I'm gonna guess that when I pour this into the hydrogen peroxide, it's going to bubble because we know that yeast is used to help bread rise um, and get fluffy. So maybe there's some bubbles in the bread dough when that's happening. And then we also said that hydrogen peroxide makes wounds bubble when you pour it on your cut. So if both of them seem to have something to do with bubbles being formed, um, maybe lots of bubbles are going to be formed when you put them together. So let's see what happens. Again, the temperature kind of stabilized at 66.7. And we're going to pour in that yeast into the hydrogen peroxide. We'll stir it. And again, ask them to note any observations. And you could see it right away. It's not, it's not a, an experiment that takes a long time in terms of seeing results. There's a lot of bubbling and fizzing. There seems to be some kind of foam forming. And that's usually a sign that a gas is being released. And so that's one of the signs that a chemical reaction is taking place. And then, let me get a little closer. The temperature that was at 66 is really quickly rising. Now it's at 82 and it's climbing so they can see that another sign of a chemical reaction taking place is occurring because there is a release of heat and they can actually feel the sides of the bowl and it feels warm and it's still climbing. Now it's at 89, 90. So how many signs have they seen during this experiment that a chemical reaction has occurred? Two. They can see really easily the release of a gas in the form of bubbles. And they can see and feel that heat has been released. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's see what happens with the second experiment. So the next chemical reaction that the students are going to perform 
is something called elephant toothpaste, and it's kind of a classic activity uh, for the classroom. Um, again, we're going to use hydrogen peroxide and yeast in this chemical reaction, and the students need to make observations, make predictions, and also look for signs that a chemical reaction is occurring. So the first thing you're going to do is measure out a quarter cup of warm water. It has to be warm. It can't be cold and it can't be hot, just warm. And we're going to mix the packet of yeast in there. Stir it up. We're going to set that aside. And then we are going to oops, measure a half cup of hydrogen peroxide. And again, this is just the hydrogen peroxide you get at the drugstore. We have a half cup right there. Right, I could use a funnel. So just use any kind of shallow cake pan. It'll be fine in any uh, water bottle. We're gonna pour the hydrogen peroxide in there. And actually, we're gonna also put in about three to four drops of food coloring, just to make the demonstration more colorful. Mix that up a bit. And then we're gonna add a squirt of Dawn dish soap. You can ask the students to predict what you think is gonna happen when you put dish soap into the hydrogen peroxide. Just a squirt. Nothing really happens, and that's fine. And then we're going to put the funnel back in and we're going to pour in the warm yeast mixture. Now, it's important that the kids make a prediction now. What do they think is gonna happen when they pour the yeast into the hydrogen peroxide and why do they think so? So you want to remind them of the reaction that they just saw before they give their answer. And hopefully they say that it should bubble because it bubbled when we put it, the peroxide and the yeast together in the first reaction. Um, and since we're using a lot more yeast here, maybe it's gonna bubble more. Okay. So they're gonna very carefully pour the yeast mixture into the hydrogen peroxide and soap and they're going to observe what happens. And so again, they have to observe for any sign that a chemical reaction is occurring. And there is a lot of foam coming out. And you can see why the activity is called elephant toothpaste. It's because it looks like a huge toothpaste bottle for an elephant. And uh, have them keep on observing, it's still going. And they could actually touch the bottle. And it is quite warm. Warmer than uh, just the warm water that we put the yeast in. It's warmer than that. And that shouldn't be a surprise because remember, this mixture climbed temperature quite quickly. And they could actually touch, it's safe to touch the foam because it's just yeast and hydrogen peroxide. They could touch the foam. The foam is warm. Okay, so I asked them, what signs do they see that a chemical reaction has taken place? And they could say, uh, the release of heat, because the bottle and the foam itself um, are quite warm. And then also the production and release of a gas because of all of the foam that's coming out, which is really, really fun. And the last part that you should do during the debrief is ask them, Okay, you just saw these two chemical reactions and you were very good at making observations and indicating what signs there were that a chemical reaction is taking place. Try to now explain why all of that foam spurted out of that bottle. What changed in between this chemical reaction, which was just hydrogen peroxide and yeast, and that chemical reaction, which technically was hydrogen peroxide and yeast as well. How come this didn't create a huge foam bubble that fizzed over and poured out into the bowl? So what changed between here and here? And you really want them to think about all the factors that changed between the first activity and the second one. 
and there were a lot. So we put soap in here. How did soap leach the foam? We also didn't use an open bowl. We used a bottle with a narrow neck. How could that have affected what happened? We also mixed the yeast with warm water before we put it into the hydrogen peroxide. And then we also use more hydrogen peroxide. So a lot of things changed. How do they think that affected the results of the activity or the results of the chemical reaction? And they can ask questions and they can speculate. And if you have time, they can actually change some of the variables and see how it affects the experiment. But yeah, that's elephant toothpaste.